most Vermonters hadn't thought about the fact that the nation was born out of a secession back in 1776. Whenever they, they hear secession, it's immediately uh, civil war, uh, uh, slavery, racism, we've been there, done that, it didn't work out so well, why are you bringing this up uh, again? Um, there are psychological uh, um, reasons, certainly. Um, I mean, secession is a radical act of rebellion grounded in anger and fear with a positive vision of the future. Uh, secession is not for the faint of heart, you know, for sure. I mean, it's, 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 it's got to be someone who has got a predisposition towards rebellion, uh, towards the philosophy of of Albert Camus. Um, and um, as I mentioned, um, um, it's been, it seems to have been a tougher sell to women than men. Um, Charles Glenn Denning, who's a psychologist and writer, and one of our members of our advisory board, wrote a nice piece about the, the challenge of <coughs> women a few months ago. And she noted, among other things, that, that kind of um, the pathway by which men and women leave the homes is quite different in, in our society. That the kind of it's not uncommon for the man to go out, uh, uh, re reject the home, seeking fame, for, fortune, going out a macho, going out alone is, is part of leave, leaving the home. The, a woman may be more inclined to maintain roots, ties, connectedness back to the home, and so secession is psychologically a, a bigger leap. I don't know whether that's, that makes sense. The group that we have um, the strongest appeal to would, would be left-leaning libertarians. And by that I mean people who uh, recognize that there are two enemies. One is called uh, the U.S. government, and the other one is called corporate America, but one owns the other. I mean, the political left, so they want to blame all of our problems on corporate America. The right wants to blame them on, on uh, the U.S. government. Our position is they're both, they're both right, it's, it's, but they're, they're, they're two, two enemies. And so, um, you know, the libertarians, they, they, they of course, don't like big government, but for a lot of libertarians um, can't handle our attacks on corporate uh, uh, America. Um, I mean, at one level, the movement was fairly hetero heterogeneous, uh, but it's still, um, I mean, for example, one of the most disappointing aspects of it is, is how tough it is to, to attract people from the academy. And we have a, a, virtually no support from the University of Vermont or Middlebury College or any of the Vermont State Colleges. They, they are so damn politically correct that secession is simply viewed as, uh, as taboo and they won't touch us with a 10-foot pole. I mean, we've actually never had an official invitation to speak. We've had some informal contact with students at, at UVM, but no official invitation in seven years to Middlebury College and UVM, and yet the movement has gotten national and international attention. You know, it is a fact of, it is an undeniable fact of life, whether they agree with it or, or, or disagree with it. Um, and another group who, who won't, uh, who's terrified to get near are, are the clergy. I mean, there was a time when the clergy in Vermont were, were very radical, very left-wing, uh, and very anti-war. For all practical purposes, the anti-war movement doesn't exist anymore. I mean, we are the anti-war movement. The Second Vermont Republic are probably the most vehemently anti-war movement in the state. The Peace and Justice Center, can you believe in Burlington, actually got out of the anti-war business. They, they dropped it. I mean, this, this shows the power of Obama. I mean, it's, you know, their man is in the White House and he's, con he's conned them into believing you know, don't sweat it, everything's going to be okay. Well, he didn't change anything. He's it's just, he's George Bush. He's a, he's a smirkless George Bush replaced Bush's smirkless smile. 
And um, the Quakers packed up and, and left the state. And uh, so there, you know, the, the peace movement in the state is dead in the water. And the, and the churches who used to be involved in it, there was a, in, in, when Reagan was president, 180 town meetings in Vermont voted uh, for a nuclear freeze. I mean, a real slap in the face to Reagan. I mean, I don't think that could happen uh, uh, today in, uh, in Vermont. There's a, there's a kind of an apathy. Um, and uh, political correctness and fear that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's challenging. But, but, but the academy and the clergy are a very tough sell. It's like, like the clergy, most churches in the state still have American flags there. I mean, it's like, who is the real God that they're worshiping? A feeling of, um, of complete disillusion with the U.S. government, a realization that it is absolutely corrupt to the core. I, I think that's ultimately it. I mean, people dance around and talk about, you know, I want to save my taxes and, and uh, um, fewer government regulations and stuff, but th those people don't do anything. They, they, they talk about um, secession, but they're not they don't act. It's, it's, it's ultimately, I think, after being driven by a, a realization that, that Reagan kind of had it like half right. You know, the Soviet Union was truly an evil empire, but, but the problem is there was another one. And, and the, the realization that uh, virtually everything we used to accuse the Soviets of, we're guilty of in, in, in spades. Just, we're almost a mirror image of many, many ways. So I think, yeah, this a realization of, of the emperor has no clothes. I think there's, I, I, I believe and write about what I call um, a Vermont mystique. Um, you know, it's you know, small, is beautiful, back, back to the land, uh, sense of community, connectedness, um, I mean, the fact that Vermont um, was an independent republic, I mean, we, our claim is that, you know, we are truly the only state that was an independent republic before joining the Union. Te Texas claims that too, but they were part of Mexico, and Vermont was never a part of anything. So it kind of invented itself, it clawed itself into uh, to existence. It was not part of the British, the French, or some other uh, 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 empire. And I think that has some, some influence. Um, I mean, it got a, uh, you know, a resurgence. Um, I mean, to look at Vermont's politics today, one has to observe what happened in the late 60s and early 70s when 100,000 hippies moved into Vermont. And um, we've become quite interested in that because uh, it was triggered by a book uh, published by uh, Scott and Helen Deering uh, about in the early 50s that, um, uh, and, and, and the influx of hippies takes place almost 20 years after the Deerings have left Vermont. But they had this profound influence on them. So it was 100,000 people came to Vermont looking for simple living, back to the land. Uh, it was, it was an anti part of anti-Vietnam, anti-racism. And a lot of those people stayed. And, and, and it had uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of influence. I mean, two of the most famous such hippies were Bernie Sanders, the US Senator, and Ben Cohen of of Ben and Jerry's uh, ice cream.